Today, we are installing the Nuclear P24F on my Talaria XXX. This controller has been long awaited. I have been watching them for a couple of years now. Um, I've always wanted to get one, but you know, just been on some other stuff. Well, they reached out, we chatted, and I got one. So before you do anything, like even take off your stock controller, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've unplugged your battery. If your battery is connected, there's a decent chance that you'll create sparks and that could be really bad. So before you do anything, unplug your battery. So I ended up having to remove the top bolt on the shock to get the battery unplugged, but we did that, got her unplugged. Now I'm just gonna close that flap, put the bolt back through there for now, and we'll get into the install. Let's look over the whole kit. First things first, we have the P24F nuclear controller. Absolute beauty. Then we have two mounting brackets. One goes on each side, mounts right to the controller here, and then allows you to use these two positions to mount it to the frame of your bike. Next, we have two covers and four screws to go on the back of the controller here. Two for power wires, three for phase wires. We have five bolts that come with the kit and an Allen key. Two of those are for power, three are for phase. We have the screen, the mount for the screen, four bolts and nuts that will mount these brackets to the controller. And then we have all the wiring we need. Let's throw this on the bike. All right, so we're gonna take these bolts and nuts. The bolt will go in through the top of the controller. And then from the back side, you'll install the nut. Now you're gonna to wanna to take a 10 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter Allen key and tighten down these bolts. Don't worry about going too tight, just snug is good enough. All right, next we are gonna plug in these shorter wires that they sent with the kit with the stock wiring harness on the Talaria Triple X. When you plug them in, make sure you hear the click like this. Now we are gonna plug our communications wire into the display. Make sure that you have it right side up. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, so it looks like here I have yellow, white, and gray as the top wires. Just make sure that yours looks the same. And then when you do go to plug this in, make sure you hear the click. Now I'm just going to reinstall the cover on the back of the display. Just like the mounting brackets on the controller, you don't have to worry about going too tight with this. Just make sure it's a little snug. Now coming back to the controller here, we're gonna plug all the wires into it. We're gonna start by removing these little white and orange um, connectors. These are just plugged in now to prevent any water from going in there. So the ones that you do not end up plugging a wire into, leave this white and orange plug in there to protect it from water. So you see this little square right here? What we're gonna do is take this tiny little flathead screwdriver and we're just gonna poke it in there and push up a little. And then you'll see it pops right out. And that's all it looks like. So we are gonna start with the wire that says IN1-4. And this one plugs in right here. Now again, when you plug this in, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hear the click. Next, we will plug in the hall sensor. And again, make sure you hear the click. Then last but not least, we will plug in the TH slash BK.
And of course, we can't forget the plug for the display. All right, so now that we have the harness all plugged in, we're gonna do the phase wires. So first, we're gonna start with the U, which is this yellow one. So when you're screwing this bolt in to connect this phase wire, um, it's screwing into brass, and brass is a very soft metal. So you really don't wanna to go too tight. Um, just a little past snug is good. That's snug, just a little more. Now that the phase wires are all installed, we're gonna put this little cover over the phase wires. Now it's a pretty snug fit, so you have to play around with it for a couple seconds to get it on there and sitting in there properly. There we go. All right, now you're gonna use a pretty small Phillips and install these tiny little screws. And these screws are also screwing into copper, so don't go too tight. You know, screw it in there, get it snug, and that will be about good. There we go. Now that we have the phase wires all installed, the next part is our power wires. I'm gonna start with the positive. The cables are just long enough, so it's a bit of a squeeze. There we go. Just like that. And again, you're screwing these right into brass, so you don't want to go too tight. Get it snug, go just a little more. Same thing with our negative cable. Again, just get it snug. It's good. All right. Now that we have the controller entirely wired up, we're just going to bolt it up onto the bike. Get this bottom one in first. Then we'll come to the other side, do this bottom one next. Just gonna do the same thing over on this side. All right, and then last step of install here. We're gonna remove that little guy and then pop this bolt out of here. Remove this little guy. And then we're gonna take the bolt that we just pulled out of there, drop it down into this, which is your mount for the screen. Hi dog. I'm just gonna tighten this puppy down. All right, it has been a couple days. Um, it was a little bit of a struggle because I have riser bars. So I had to 3D print this little extender. Um, this little piece right here is the same as a GoPro mount. So what your screen mounts to is basically a little GoPro mount that bolts into your headset. So I had to 3D print a little extender to make it fit here with my riser bars. Um, anyways, besides the point, we got the bike on the stand now. Um, we're gonna do the motor setup. So here's the home screen on the display. Um, we're gonna do the motor setup. So you're gonna press 
back arrow, go down to devices, press yes, nuclear P24F, go down, auto setup, down, press yes on full setup, go over until it says on, and then press the green button again. And then now it'll say press brake. I don't have brake sensors, so I'm just gonna click that, turn it off, and then now it says to press the throttle. So I'm pressing the throttle, release the throttle. Now it's gonna spin to get the, uh, the hall sensor figured out, see what orientation it's in. I'll let you guys watch the screen while it does this for a second. still says that it's measuring motor LR. I'm not exactly sure what LR is, but there we go. That's gonna make this horrible noise twice. Three times. There we go. And that is the full setup. So now that we have the motor configuration all set up, I'm gonna go back and go down to battery. Yes. So battery type, I have a Chai battery, um, which uses a 21700 cell, which is gonna be a Lion 3.6 volt nominal. Um, and then I'm gonna go down one more. This is a 72 volt battery. So I'm gonna wanna select 20S. If you're running a 60 volt battery, you'll select 16S and then go down max supply voltage. So I just set that to 85 because the max voltage on this battery is 84. Um, supply min. Normally I have it cut off at 65 volts, but I just put it at 62 for now. And then charge max 40A, um, discharge max. So that means it'll discharge up to 200 amps, um, 200 line amps continuous, not phase amps, but line amps and continuous, not peak. Um, and then DC battery voltage, that's what it is now. All right, so now that all of this is done, um, we're gonna go up and make sure we save this quick. So save settings, make sure that says on, and then nuclear P24F saved. And that is the install of a nuclear P24F on a Talaria XXX. This was the easiest install of any controller I've ever put onto a bike. Um, I just went for the test ride and made a video on that. So I'm posting this one today, probably watch out in the next day or two for the test ride video where I kind of show off the controller a little bit more. And uh, I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace.